watch Captain Kangaroo. I am your friend and confidant. Well, you know, we got a bunch to talk about today, so uh, we will get right into it. I, I, I begin, I mean, <clears throat> we're going to talk a lot about politics a little bit later, because obviously we had the big vice presidential debate. That happened uh, on Thursday. In fact, a lot happened on Thursday. Uh, it, was, it was a very, very, uh, especially here, for me personally, uh, it was a very uh, packed day in terms of television viewing, because three things were happening. Uh, previous to any of it, I had a, 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 a go game in uh, the North Beach area of San Francisco. And then as the, the evening's programming began, three things were butting against each other head to head. The first was the Pittsburgh Steelers were playing the Tennessee Titans. This is a Thursday game. They're doing Thursday games all year now in the NFL, and the Pittsburgh Steelers are my team. I like to watch them. I like to watch football being played. And it just so happens that the number one Pittsburgh Steelers bar in San Francisco, Giordano Brothers, happens to be located in North Beach right next to where I was doing the game. So it was very easy for me to walk in there and all of a sudden be amongst a bunch of people who want to watch the same football game as I do, and, and that was fun. It was, a, it was a communal kind of thing. Yeah, I, I like those kind of situations. You yell, you scream, you cheer, because that's what sports is about, is being able to all focus on something really s trivial, you know, and pour a lot of passion into it and have a fun time because people like being passionate. Secondarily, it was a huge baseball day in San Francisco. San Francisco Giants were playing the Reds in a deciding game five. The Oakland A's were playing the Detroit Tigers in a deciding game five. Earlier that afternoon, the Giants had beaten the Reds. And the A's were going to play the Tigers. So, you know, I, I, I probably had to go to a, uh, to a Steelers bar to watch that game because there was no way that I was going to go to another bar and watch it because everybody's going to be watching the A's. And they should. The A's were having a magical year, and it was a big, deciding, exciting game five. I wanted to watch that too. Amongst all of that, is, of course, the vice presidential debate, which on any given day, I would have been very, very excited to watch one of those things. The fact that they were all going on at the same time was awesome. Ultimately, I only really wound up getting to watch the Steeler game, and I rewatched the vice presidential debates afterward. Uh, but the funny thing is I was with somebody for whom all three of those things would be like driving nails into her eyes. My platonic friend, Ashley Paramore, with me the entire time, and I have to drag her to, to watch any of them. Trying to, to, to get her willingly to watch any of them was, was torture. Uh, so finally, I wind up, uh, you know, luckily, um, I persuaded her, because I'm very, very persuasive. I used a uh, arguing technique called uh, red wine, and vodka cranberries, and she was mollified for uh, just a little bit for, for half the game. Now, as it turns out, all, everything was, was terrible, except for the vice presidential debate. I rewatched that, and that was awesome. But um, A's lost, Steelers lost, Steelers got half their team injured. Just ugly. I don't even know. I mean, f like, like I said before, like the point of sports is that you get to put your passion into a thing. You get to exercise your passion. I think it's like, it's like, you know, the reason why people used to go to war all the time back in the day, you know? Because everybody just likes to get their dander up. Everyone likes to scream and yell and point and blame people and blame things and just, and just fly off the handle. We're a better society that we can channel that into sports and not all go grab swords and raise the banner against a fiefdom 14 miles down the road. And we're not burning and looting villages. Because that's what this would be otherwise. That's what this would be. So, uh, ultimately, um, the vice presidential debate was the only thing that, that delivered for me. Uh, you want to? Let, let's go ahead and get into uh, the politics right now. Let's go ahead and play our our theme song. Politics, politics.
gal is like a All right. Um, I play her to win. Here was the narrative going in to the, the, the vice presidential debates. The first debate, the likes of which no one has ever seen, by the way. This has never happened, ever, that a debate mattered to this level the, that the first debate did. We had a solid narrative going into that debate that this was Mitt Romney's last best chance. When you say the words last best chance, that means it's over. That means that this is, uh, you know, <laughs> although the, the Cardinals, the St. Louis Cardinals might argue differently, this is bottom of the ninth, two outs, two strikes. It's over. Statistically, it's done. Fanato. That's what people thought. Now, I think that was a little bit overblown, but that's what people were saying. Today, not only is Mitt Romney consistently polling nationally ahead of Barack Obama, but the trend lines on the Electoral College map for which the Obama camp and supporters have always pointed to. It's been scoreboard. Whenever there's any kind of argument, oh, this is going wrong, or this isn't being handled correctly, or what are they going to do about unemployment, what are they going to do about jobs, they just go scoreboard, scoreboard, electoral college. And all of a sudden, that map, a map that, by the way, two weeks ago had him ahead by seven or eight points in Florida, had him ahead by 13 or 14 points in Ohio, which you win both those. You you box them up. You're you you win if you're Barack Obama. If you win Ohio and Florida, it, it would take a miracle. And it would be very, very weird if Mitt Romney won. Now, if Mitt Romney wins Ohio and Florida, then you know, you're looking at a bit of an issue. You're looking at Mitt Romney probably winning. Those are two gigantic states. Same with Virginia, same with North Carolina. All of a sudden, that map has got troubling trend lines, as they might say. I don't know who they are, but as they might say. Um, and it's not, it, 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 it's, it's remarkable, because a lot of people would, would point to other debates, and they would say that they had an effect. The most famous would be Kennedy-Nixon, specifically, because, and, and the Kennedy-Nixon story kind of has more to do with, uh, you know, uh, with, with people talking about the advent of television, people talking about the advent of a different version of uh, and an evolution of what the presidential race is in terms of image. Um, so that's, uh, that's what uh, that's about. But, but people always say that, that the debate uh, was turned, or sorry, that that race, Nixon Kennedy, in 60, was turned based on the fact that Nixon didn't want to wear makeup, Kennedy wore makeup, he was a much more handsome man, and it was probably the birthplace of when we found out that people with gigantic heads look good on television. Because Kennedy had a massive head. Holy shit. You ever take a look at Kennedy's, JFK's head? Holy moly. It's, it's, you could, it's like Easter Island. It's like Easter Island, in, except it goes wide instead of tall. Like, it's just, and, and you know, it, it's not like it doesn't go tall. It, like, if you separated JFK's head and uh, just made him the thwomp from, from uh, Super Mario Brothers, I swear to God, somebody put JFK's head on a thwomp from, from Mario Brothers, and I swear to God, you won't even be able to tell the difference. Show them side by side, and you will not be able to tell which one is JFK and which one is the thwomp. Um... So he does great, but at the same time, and 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 people will, uh, you know, people will say, and now we're getting into we're getting into the nitty gritty of things. Liberal partisans talk about voter suppression. Conservative partisans talk about voter fraud. This is something that's always talked about. It's two sides of the same coin, and it all comes from 1960. Conservatives believe that that election was stolen from them. It's my favorite political conspiracy theory of all time because it involves awesome people. 
Conservatives believe that Nixon had that election stolen from him because JFK had a secret alliance with the mob, uh, a, a deal brokered by JFK's friend, Frank Sinatra, specifically with the Chicago crime family led by Momo Giancana, and that they raised the dead in Chicago and uh, in, in other parts of the country and got JFK elected. Now, that the, the echoes of that are here to this day. You hear today from liberals talking about how Republicans are trying to keep people from the vote. You hear conservatives talking about how liberals are trying to manufacture the vote and get people who aren't voters to vote. Uh, and to be honest, I mean, I, I can't speak to any specific, uh, any, any, any specific cases. I, I don't know enough about them in this election cycle. But I do know that this is a consistent thing. And to me, it's an echo from 1960. But there was a conspiracy about somebody stealing the election. It wasn't a blow away. It wasn't like somebody was, was walking, you know, walking away with it. Like, Kennedy all of a sudden was a sure bet after that first debate. And either of them were really, like, super trailing behind. This is the most absolutely game-changing debate ever. E-V-A-R. Ever. Never happened like this before. Real Clear Politics had a really interesting uh, uh, stat. No presidential candidate behind who is behind by the amount that Mitt Romney was behind going into the first debate in their average of polling has ever won. But nobody consistently leading after the first debate, which Mitt Romney now is, has ever lost. That one of those two things will happen this year. Why did it happen? You know, we can talk about we can talk about why uh, why it happened. I, I'd say there was a really interesting real clear politics um uh column about uh the uh Obama strategy through 08 and, and now and specifically their point was that uh they have been very good at always being able to deflect bad news with good news which is an interesting strategy and is the first time that I ever read something that made me understand what they were doing, because anybody who's listened to this is, is understood. I haven't exactly understood what the main message of the Obama campaign uh, was beyond, you know, that we are we are good. You liked us then, like us now. Uh, you know, I, I've been I've been confused by it. So the idea I saw that was a pattern I understood, um, and that now what's happened is that they can't deflect the bad news until this week. Now, what are we to make of Thursday's uh, uh, debate? You want to know what? I'll tell you what. I'm sick of reading other polls. I'm sick of reading CNN, USA Today, uh, CNBC, all, all these other stuff. I want to do a jury Saturday poll of everybody who watched it. And there's 56 people here right now. Somebody go ahead and start a straw poll. And let's say who won the debate. Representative Paul Ryan, Vice President Joe Biden. Somebody make a straw poll there and, uh, and, 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 and check that out. Now, I will say I believe – I mean – the TLDR, I don't think it's going to, um, uh, I don't think it's going to really move the needle, except for one element, which I think it very much did move the needle. In terms of independent voters, I don't really think it has a, a, a big change. To be honest with you, I don't. I don't think it has the change that the first, uh, you know, debate had because it's not with the guys. We are talking about Romney and Obama. We're not talking about Joe Biden and uh, Paul Ryan. It's just, it's it's not. I think the second debate will have, have the capacity to move the needle more. But so in terms of independent voters, I don't really think it has that much of a deal. However, I do believe, and th there we go. The straw poll is in the chat room right now. If you're watching this, go into the chat room, click on the straw poll. If you watch the vice presidential debate, uh, tell me who do you think 
uh, one, Ryan or Biden. Pick one. I will, uh, I will, I will keep up on that. Now, <laughs> uh, T2, T2 in the chat room says uh, it's either Paul Ryan, unchecked, Joe Biden, unchecked. I'm just here for the booze, check mark. Uh, this debate was a Rorschach. Rorschach. Not quite the Rorschach from uh, Watchmen, although I'm sure he would have very interesting thoughts on this debate. <laughs> I'd like to smash both their faces. I'm Rorschach from the Watchmen, political commentator. Back to you, Carville. Um, I think it was a Rorschach. People saw what they wanted to see. You have a guy in Joe Biden who, no matter what, the defining element of the debate was the fact that he was laughing. That he was smiling, that he was laughing. Now, what does that mean to a certain amount of people, liberal people, people who like Joe Biden, people who were disappointed in Obama and wanted to see this campaign rebound, it was looked at as confident. It was looked at as brash and bold and the kind of person that can win an argument you know, for America. That can tell a convincing story and, more specifically, that will hold the opponent to their lies. To others, conservatives, you saw somebody who was really unprofessional and downright rude uh and and somebody that uh you know the word statesmanlike is talked about a lot did you want that guy negotiating really important things like iraq I, 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 sorry afghanistan you know in the in the uh bob woodward book bush's wars he had a very loud voice during those negotiations. He will have a very loud voice in the next four years if they're reelected about foreign policy stuff. Do you want that guy, the guy who interrupts and, and, and laughs and smiles and, and tends to make the other guy seem little and, and less than? Is that the guy whose hand you want at the tiller? That's what conservatives are thinking. And they would obviously say no because they don't want him elected. They want the other guy elected. As far as Ryan, I thought he did good. You know, I thought, you know, he, Biden elevated things to a very frantic level. A more experienced debater, I think, probably could have scored points on Biden because he was a little all over the map. Um, but he didn't. Uh, and that's not necessarily his, it's not a failure that he didn't. Because uh, I think he came off, he achieved the core of what he wanted to do which was come across as a reasonable guy that people would not be scared of. And I think no matter if you disagree with Paul Ryan, he didn't come off as scary. He didn't come off as somebody that you'd be like, oh, Jesus, I don't want him in the White House. Which, by the way, even though I thought that Sarah Palin and, and Joe Biden in 08 were frighteningly close, uh, I think that Sarah Palin came off to people like, I don't want her in the White House. She seems crazy pants um alpha cheese and uh uh scotty roland going back and forth in the chat room alpha cheese saying i sure as hell don't want paul ryan doing anything with foreign policy scotty roland says how would you like biden in charge of foreign policy now that's scary um well scotty i would i would correct you and say how do you like joe biden in charge of foreign policy because he is He's, he's a guy who's, who's very, very involved in it. And so, we turn to this week's debate. This week's debate will be a rematch of, again, I say, underlined, the most influential and important debate in the history of American politics except maybe Lincoln-Douglas, only because we still use that style. But 
in terms of the modern American political era, there's been no debate that has had a bigger effect on a bigger stage, period. End of sentence. You know, I, why that is, is something, especially if Romney wins, that we will be discussing and will be the subject of political science classes for the next 25 to 30 years, if not longer. Um, it was massive. Massive. Just look at the data. Look at that map. Look at the polling. Right now, Mitt Romney is ahead by, I think, in, in the latest Tampa Tribune, Miami Herald poll, seven points. Seven points. If 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 there is another, you know, if let's say, uh, I mean, Obama now goes from a, a situation where he was, this was on cruise control for a lot of people. This was play out the clock. This was not a, a contest. Uh, Romney was thinking about moving out of Ohio and spending money elsewhere to try and, 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 and reshape his map and... and Try to, to fight harder in, in Virginia and Florida. And now all of a sudden, um, it's, it's, uh, it, it's, a, it's, it's a, uh, a horse race. Um, it, here's what I'm saying. Uh, ML, MLK Opelk says, so Jerry, you reckon it's a likely outcome to almost call this election for Romney? No. No, 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 absolutely not, no, 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 no. Um, I will say that right now Obama is on a a in a tenuous place that was almost inconceivable three weeks ago. Almost inconceivable uh, uh, where uh, they are right now, which is if bad things happen to them, even outside of their control, uh, like if let's say there is a continuing deterioration of the Benghazi thing or or and this is what is a problem for them, there are. The evidence comes to light from inside the administration that they knew about things and didn't do them more so than they have or continues to come to light and we continue to see a fuller picture of people trying to cover things up. That's that's where the problem because it's not the crime. It's the cover up. If all of a sudden you have some email from somebody saying uh, we can't talk about this as a terrorist attack. Let's continue talking about the video that's a major issue. That now, before, three weeks ago, that comes out, Obama can survive that. Now, that comes to light, that could lose Obama the election. Because look at it this way. This is why things are really, really, really troubling for them. Last Friday, we had employment numbers come out. 7.8. First time it's been under 8% unemployment uh, for, you know, the, it's the lowest that it's been under under the Obama presidency. Builds into his narrative that we're getting better. It's sure it's slower than we'd want to be, but it is getting better. We are making progress. Stick with me, kid. I'll take you to the promised land. And look, we are already taking steps in that direction. Um, that was swallowed up. That's bad. That's really, 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 really bad. We are not talking about that anymore. And during the vice presidential debate, in an election that has been an economy election, she led off with Libya. Not with the 7.8 number. Not with the talking points on that. That's bad news. You want that people to be talking about that if you are the Obama campaign. You want people to be talking, even if it's about the controversy, even if it's about people saying, well, these are, are, aren't the right numbers. Because you get that number out to people. Um, so, you know, that's, that's what... Uh, that's, what's, uh, that's what's the problem. And, and you know, he's in... A precarious position. 
If he lays another egg or comes off as too aggressive in in this second debate, I think it's a problem. You know, he can't come out like Biden. Biden can be Biden. Biden can turn this into a barroom argument like he did. He fought on his playing field, and if you agree with that playing field, which is the real difference, and that's why I think that like this came out as a draw to a slight Ryan win in terms of if you look at the aggregate polling, uh, it's not that he didn't win the argument. It's that he took the argument in a direction that most people don't find favors somebody they like. Um, Alpha Cheese says, Ronnie doesn't smell like roses over the Libya situation either. There is very, 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 uh, a very big difference. Somebody is in the White House and the other guy isn't. It doesn't matter what he's saying. It doesn't matter what he is doing. This is a referendum on one guy's job performance. That's it. You know. Uh, and, and Zombie Jesus says, Obama can't be uh, aggressive because he's black and white people are afraid of uh, aggressive black men. Um, I mean, you never want to be aggressive as a politician. I, I wouldn't deny that there is certainly a racial component to everything. You know, uh, there is, of course, a racial component to everything. But uh, it's also counter to his persona. The persona that we know of him, which is that he's a calm, cool, collected guy. That's what people voted for. People like that. If he gets away from that and, and starts to uh, look frantic in comparison to how he normally acts, that will not play well. Um, so, you know, there's, there's a lot that can go, that can, that, that can, that can happen between now and, and election day, but, uh, you know, you saw stories before and after the vice presidential debate that the Obama campaign would like to reset the race. They want to reset the narrative. That tells you that they know they are in, in trouble. This has not been a good couple weeks for them. So, um, there we go. All right. Well, that is uh, the, the politics talk uh, for this week. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the exclusive Jury Friday uh, polling here. A slam dunk for uh, for old Joe Biden. 21 votes, uh, 88% to three votes for Paul Ryan. Again, the absolutely statistically uh, uh, sound polling that we are doing here on Jury Saturday. You guys believe that Joe Biden trounced Paul Ryan. Now, I would only submit that this me this says more about the people that are watching the show than exactly what happened. That's all I would say. I think that this was a Rorschach debate. You saw what you wanted to see. Um, all right. I don't even know what to make of this Alpha Cheese comment about uh, different black guys. I... I, I'm not going to get into the racial makeup of black America. I think that is a pitfall of all pitfalls for me to start talking about Obama as a different guy because of his genetic black makeup and where exactly his blackness came from. Uh, that seems like a massive, massive mistake. So I will not, uh, I will not touch that one. Um, all right. You know, I want to. I do want to uh, give a huge shout out to uh, Massaworm Cargill. He wrote a movie called Sinister. Uh, it came out in theaters yesterday. I've yet to see it. I didn't go to the movies last night. But uh, tell you what, if that goddamn thing didn't get number one at the box office, beating Taken Two in its strong second week, beating the Kevin James movie Here Comes the Boom, uh, just massive. Massive for uh, for for Cargill, uh, and and it just it, I'm so so happy, you know. I just love it when everybody, you know, especially people that are cool with the show and everything, um, you know, does does well. And and he's he's always been really really nice, not only to us, but um, 
you know, just in general. And and to be honest, I'm I'm a fan of of his writing. I've been a fan of his writing since uh, he was writing with Anna Cool News. And and you know, I think I've said a couple times that you know that was like the first, like one of the first two websites that I, I fell in love with, and I still check to this day. Every day, I'm I'm an everyday Anna Cool News reader, largely because I just started reading it when I was a kid. Um, yeah, I'd be curious to see what what was what were those websites for you guys? Because that's what's beautiful about the internet is that you know you you get to have such an amazing experience with these niches, like with these elements, and 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 especially you know for me and and you know uh, as uh, the World Wide Web was just kind of fully in bloom as as uh, the walled garden idea of, of AOL kind of stopped and, and the World Wide Web itself, the Internet in earnest as we know it, uh, started to really become a commercial place where a lot of people were. Um, it wasn't even that these sites were good in the way that we think of sites being good now because now we have a framework. Uh, I think this still happens, but back then everything was like, holy shit, other people care about these things? Um, you know, and they care about it to the level that I care about it? It was just such a, an enthralling experience. It was like discovering gold. It, it, more than that, it was like discovering a village where you got to hang out with people made of gold. And then they were like, here. We'll dip you in gold. You will be a gold person, and we will wait for others to come find our golden village, and we will dip them in gold, and we will live gold lives. We'll have gold hookups. We'll eat gold meals. We'll drive gold cars. I don't know where that was going, but it was it was beautiful and shiny and new and amazing. And for me, people caring about movies and caring about trailers and caring about... Uh, 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 box office figures and stuff like that, that was like so relevant to my interest. I just wanted to be there. I wanted to be there where others were. We'll take golden showers, says Chimera96. Scotty Rowland says we'll poop gold. Yes, yes, all of these things will be true when we live in the golden village. Uh, I'm seeing the force.net. That was that was a big one, and obviously, listen, like uh, uh, the One Ring dot net, you know, and and even just the idea of like, no, 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 fuck life. I'm obsessed with one thing. This one thing is Star Wars. This one thing is Lord of the Rings. Um, Chimera ninety six. That was before I went to Syracuse. I was still in Florida. I was I was not in college when when that stuff was happening. Um, I love Syracuse. For the record, I love Syracuse. Syracuse is cold as fuck and snowy as a motherfucker, but uh, I do. I love I love Central New York. Big shout outs. Live Journal, Zombo. I don't even know what the fuck Zombo is, but it sounds awesome. I guess, like, those people are special to me. You know, like, like they, they are, are an element of my personality, uh, or an element that shaped my personality. Their opinions, their writings, whether I agreed with them or disagreed with them, they, they came to me at a very influential time in my life. And for somebody that wound up getting into writing, it was important to kind of have that back and forth, at least in my head. Like, I didn't talk to them. Um, and in fact, the one time that I brought up to Cargill that I was very influenced by that site and his writing specifically, uh, he just kind of brushed it off like I was trying to make him sound old. <laughs> um So, huge shout out to him. And again, I think I, I just said this on Twitter, that Romney Malco comes on the show, talks about Think Like a Man, number one. Cargill comes on the show, talks about Sinister. I think he had just gotten done filming it. Talks about the movie. Today, it's a number one movie. You want your movie to go to number one? You might not have the biggest budget in the world. Come to our show. We make hits. We make hits. Uh, all right. All right. Well, you know what? I'll tell you what. I think 
that's about all I have for today. Uh, let me see if there's anything else that I had mentioned that I wanted to talk about. Oh, television. Um, all right. Uh, okay, real quick notes. Um, the podcast uh, subscription feed for Who's the Boss featuring me and Ashley Paramore is now up. You can go to frogpants.net and find it there. Uh, I think it, say, it still says coming soon on the front page, but don't worry about it. It's not coming soon. It's there. Um, so go ahead, check that out. Uh, I just uploaded last night the very, very profane and excited episode where we review The Angels Take Manhattan, the episode where uh, Amy and Rory leave the doctor for good. Uh, spoiler alert, I was upset by it. And I will let you go and listen to it uh, so you can find out why I was screaming and yelling. Which, again, is not rare for me, but did happen. We will have new episodes with that as the as the Doctor Who episodes come out, so prepare yourself for Christmas. So we got the iTunes stream up just in time to uh, have there be no episodes until Christmas. However, however, um, yeah, Alpha Cheese is pointing out that Jerry really, really loved the Statue of Liberty bit better than Ghostbusters 2. Well... Comparing this episode to Ghostbusters 2 makes Ghostbusters 2 look like Ghostbusters 1. Uh, I was not happy about the Statue of Liberty bit. I, I go into great detail. I start dropping F-bombs, uh, leveling just damning charges against the whole of uh, the United Kingdom because I'm so upset about the Statue of Liberty thing. And that, as we call in the podcasting trade, my friends, is a tease. Uh, what else? Television. This week, tomorrow, we have a, uh, we have the return of a show that I am more conflicted about than Doctor Who. I'm very conflicted about Doctor Who. I love Doctor Who. I'm frustrated much of the time by Doctor Who. I have never been enthralled with a series and then so quickly loathe it. Like I have the show that is beginning again this Sunday. Yes, my friends, it is, in fact, The Walking Dead. Now... Clearing the chakras. I'm going to try to talk about The Walking Dead. Zombie Jesus here says, read the comic, way better. Read the comic. Got problems with the comic. In fact, I I was accused of being troll bait, but I stick to it for this uh, for, to this day that the first season, for me, was handled those storylines better than the comic did. And I thought that Robert Kirkland did a lot of things that if you were to ask him, uh, you know, because he was shaping the story, would you do these things differently? He did them differently in the first season. I like the first season more than I like the comics of that specific era. The second season, not so much. Um... I thought the second season was horrifyingly bad. Terrible. Awful. No good. No good. Oh, jeez. I mean, like, it was... It wasn't just bad. It was torture. It was terrible. It was awful. I wrote recaps every single week on, on weird things. You can read them, but... Oh, God, was I frustrated by it. Now, the third season. Did The Walking Dead do anything at the end of the second season that made me excited about The Walking Dead? Yes. We're done with the shitty sitting on the farmhouse. Um, so I guess I have... I have an element of excitement. 
you know, going into it. And specifically, if I were to be fair, the show this season will deal with what is far and away, easily, the most compelling storyline in the comic. And everybody talks about the comic, they talk about this storyline. It is the definitive storyline of this series. That is that of Woodbury and the Governor. It deals with the darkest elements. It creates a very, very, very compelling and uh, at times even sympathetic villain, which is hard to do, and they do very well in the comic, and has a satisfying and game-changing end. So, combine that with the fact that we are returning, you know, my dude, my dad, my my uh, internet father, uh, Michael Rooker, is back to being a regular on the show, which I have made no secret. He was uh, an element, when I say that the show was better than the comic, he is a reason why, I an element why I believe the show was better than the comic in the first season. Um, so, am I excited about The Walking Dead's premiere? Uh, yes. Yes, I am. I am. Uh, I, I want to believe that they have looked at second season and they said, this shit was unwatchable. We have a chance to do a great season, to do a great story, to tell just this awesome self-contained arc that combines everything that's amazing thematically about this story. The brutality, the politics, the human dynamics. We don't have to rely on uh, fucking losing Carl every episode to, to gin up drama. We have, we have legitimate storylines that will be interesting. Um, the idea in this season of parallel civilizations. When we left our band of, of survivors, uh, things have, uh, had, had not become a democracy anymore. They were a rictatorship. Uh, now we see the governor and, and Woodbury, and and how, you know, how society has continued for them. You have all the element with the prison, uh, which you know, I it just, oh, I don't know. I'm so conflicted. I'm so conflicted. Um, I don't know. We'll see, folks. Uh, I do. I will. I'll, I'm, I'm happy to say that I'm going to. Uh, I'm going to do recaps on weird things again. I'll do my walking dissections for weird things again, and um, you know, maybe maybe we'll do a podcast or something. Who knows? I do like to yell about things, and uh, I like to do it a lot. Anyway, um, to I've not seen Last Resort, and I have I've only seen parts of Revolution, and it's frustrated the out of me. I had pee in me, and then I watched Revolution, and Revolution was just like, my pee was just like, oh God, why are they talking to each other like that? Of course he's the guy who fucking created the militia. Oh my God. And then the pee left, because it was just frustrated. And what am I going to do? Tell it to stay? No. Um, so anyway. All right. Well, that's about it for this edition of Jury Saturday. Uh, if you like what you've heard, go ahead and follow me on Twitter, Justin R. Young. Uh, other stuff that I've done, uh, we have finally, we had the SpaceX uh, edition of Weird Things live on the website. Go check that out. We have an, I have an interview with Eric DeCamps, who's a great sleight of hand magician. He's got a show coming up in Chicago on the 19th. Uh, go check that out if you're into magic. And... Of course, Anders of Derby U uh, is uh, live and, and in charge and having a good time. Having a fun time. Um, and that's it. That's it for Jerry Saturday. 
Uh, until next week, ladies and germs, uh, my name is Justin Robert Young, and between now and the next time that I see your beautiful face, do me a favor. Please don't die.